Raised beach is another thing I'd like to discuss. All I really want to say about this is there are some cases in which the raised beach phenomenon is actually natural, just like it's described here, and there are probably some cases where it's artificial, like I've been showing. And what it is is basically wave-cut platforms, uh, an abrasion platform, and then the water level recedes, and then another wave-cut platform occurs over a long period of time, and then the water level, the sea level, recedes again, and then another platform forms. So here's that, uh, in Scotland, that thing. I'll show you that in a second in Google Earth. New Zealand, pretty cool. Santa Cruz, California, and I'm 50-50 on this, could be either way, natural or artificial, or both natural, then artificially edited. Uh, so let's go to this one, uh, Kincraig Point in Scotland. Don't want to spend too much time on this. Here it is in Google Earth, and see it here. I'm going to go with artificial on this one, my best guess, although natural wouldn't surprise me either, obviously. But uh, let's look at the older photos. Okay. Nineteen forty five. And I I just think this in particular looks a little clean to me, the raised staggering of it. The multiple levels here. It looks like the transition is kinda artificial, although obviously it's been recently uh, managed in modern years, and I'm 50-50, artificial, natural, I don't know, and all the other examples on the, in the Wikipedia article, the Santa Cruz and New Zealand look basically the same. Here's one more example, raised beach ridges, I don't quite see the ridges, but you kind of see the, the platform, which is caused by the the wave action abrasion. And something like this, I would say 50-50 once again, although I'd probably lean towards natural in this case. Just interesting to look at. Tombolo. All right, this is something I may have screwed up on, or definitely did a little bit, a lot. <laughs> so when you have an island, in front of a landmass, then the wave energy, the incoming waves, bend around this island and interfere in such a way that there's constructive interference on the other side of the island between the island and the mainland, so that deposition occurs and sand or gravel or um, sediment general material accumulates here and you have this kind of curve which seems to stretch from the island to the the rest of the land and it can happen between multiple islands uh, tombolo cluster and it's it's pretty common pretty well understood and i'm sure i learned about it at some point in school but i guess i had forgotten about it so uh so a lot of the stuff I was calling a clean swept curve along the coast is just a tombolo. Some stuff does not fit the bill of a tombolo, but many things do. So later in this video, I'll, I'll retract a bunch of examples, which I was saying might be artificial, but it's just diffraction and refraction of waves. And here's an example of one. You have an island and then 
kind of mainland here and then these this stretch of flat land here between the the mainland and the this island here so and it kind of there's a river here which adds another element but uh yeah just one example river delta is okay this concept so there's multiple types there's wave dominated there's uh, river dominated so whether the the ocean or the river is having more of an impact on the delta um, and i mention it because the the streaks along the coast in many cases the streaks are associated with deltas so with the beach ridges um what else to say about this sometimes uh it forms a point and it's fairly natural like i was i was saying that some of the coastlines in lakes as well um had pointy a pointy end to the land and i was saying it looks kind of artificial but i mean it's just a, a natural phenomenon and once again just because you name something doesn't mean you understand it but in general this phenomenon is pretty well understood as far as i can gather this article or post mentioned uh, artificial channels and management of river deltas and it gave a bunch of links all the links were dead but a lot of the um, the straight line features we're seeing in coastal areas and elsewhere as well river deltas especially it's attributed to uh, the United States Army Corp of Engineers at least in the United States where you see it and I question that I don't just throw it out the window obviously but uh, I think much of the patterning we see the artificial WTF patterns we see in river delta areas areas and elsewhere might just be part of this terraforming project in addition to modern control structures and management floodplain is another concept just want to briefly touch on an area of land adjacent to a stream or river which stretches from the banks of its channel to the base of the enclosing valley walls and which experiences flooding during periods of high discharge so that could explain some of the very flat vast areas So, like you have a river, and then the, the whole area around the river is flat. But then I'm also saying that it's possible, if not probable, that much of the land was cleared at some point, possibly prior to the floodplaining of these areas. This image. Not quite sure what I want to say about it, just it's interesting. It looks to be natural, but one could imagine how this image might look somewhat artificial from these satellite images, or at least be misconstrued by me as artificial. Just an interesting example of what rock can do. Could be artificial, but I think it's probably natural. Okay, wave cut platforms, that's a phenomenon um, on coasts where you have a flat area of rock and the cliffs, the cliff is receding and as it erodes it forms this platform and this image explains it a little bit, a little better. The headland, retreating cliff, wave cut notch as it eats into the bottom of the thing first um, and then abrasion creates this platform. and. I don't know if I was questioning whether this type of thing was artificial, but it's probably not, at least in most cases. Here's a cool example of one. 
got this big cliff and this flat area of rock and all the patterns pretty cool just saying that it's natural just showing for reference as a an example of a wave cut platform i'd say there's still in light of some of the other stuff we've seen there's still like a i don't know 10 20 percent chance that this is artificial but like this is all like pretty natural stuff so and pretty well understood we can observe it forming in real time as well so this is an article just explaining different coastal phenomena and why am i including this uh longshore drift blah 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 um spits and barrier islands and what do you call them sandbars it's actually i'll show a video of it in a moment of a spit forming and morphing and over a relatively short period of time so a spit that forms across a gap in the mainland is actually and of course this is a 2d simplification from above but it's a pretty straightforward thing and I don't think all the uh, barrier islands and spits we're seeing are necessarily as suspicious as I thought they were, although they may be in some cases. This is an example of coastal dunes or uh, beach ridges. Once again, a fairly well understood phenomenon and got the newer ridges towards the coast and the older ridges away from the coast and once again i read all this stuff but i i i kind of forgot a lot of it so i'm not super prepared on this particular segment blah 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 four dunes all this stuff needs to be taken into account sand dune wouldn't surprise me if a lot of sand dunes, like especially the Sahara and stuff, are actually like artificial dumpings of sand. You know what I mean? Like a bunch of sand was just dumped on an area. Wouldn't surprise me if it's natural, blah, blah. Corrasion is another thing that happens worth touching on briefly. It's just basically another word for abrasion or a type of abrasion rocks bumping against rocks basically just something to be aware of it can result in some of these uh these lines and apparent parallel lines and what looks like layering hmm crenulation is when there's mechanical stress from compressing material from different directions and then the uh, the material ripples like this under the stress and that might account for some of the so-called changes of direction which I've I don't know if I've put it in my videos but it's in the place marks a lot of stuff where the rock the flow of the rock changes directions and it could just be due to tectonic stress or either large scale or in some cases smaller scale mechanical stress on an area causing the uh, what looks like a change in direction if plate tectonics is real <laughs> i don't even know at this point but i don't know Cuspate foreland. Okay, this, I was saying certain parts of coastlines look too pointy to be natural, but apparently it's just wave energy interfering, and it's fairly straightforward. Like here, looks pretty pointy. And another example. But in all likelihood, it's just a conventional... Uh, 
a good old-fashioned cuspate foreland that formed the way cuspate forelands form. Let's read about it real quick. Longshore drift, accretion and progradation of shand and shingle. They can even migrate. The debate involving how cuspate forelands form is ongoing. Okay, so there's at least some uncertainty. So maybe the doors open a little bit for artificiality. So it's a combination of longshore drift and winds working in opposite directions which meet at the point of the feature and also contributing to it is when waves are diffracted around a barrier so you might have some hidden barrier underwater here that's uh, affecting the the slow deposition of material around that barrier that is enough about cuspate forelands Polder. Okay, I could spend... Well, I'll have to talk more about this in my old grids episode, um, which is coming up soon. Polder is basically this type of stuff. It's water management. And you see it on a very large scale. And I'm going to go with... Un, well, it's obviously artificial but I'm going to go with it's not the conventional explanation. Let me say that a different way. I'm going to go against the conventional explanation. So what is polder? Polder is a low-lying tract of land enclosed by dikes that form an artificial hydrological entity, meaning it has no connection with outside water other than through manu manually operated devices. Multiple types of polder here, and it's basically an engineering technique to drain wetlands and make them more usable for agriculture and other development. Okay, so when was all this done? Because basically a lot of the Netherlands is covered in this pattern and much of the rest of the world as well. Only really touching on it here because I'll talk more about it with the old grids episode. But I'm saying, in my humble opinion, it's more likely that it's part of some type of terraforming project. Resurfacing, you know, after a reset or whatever. I don't know. It's too large scale to have been done in like the 1800s with minimal equipment you know, industrial revolution and manpower and gritty, stoic 12-hour shifts and stuff like that. You know, people can do a lot, especially with technology that was apparently coming out in the 1800s. But uh, it's just too, there's too much of it, in my opinion, to be recent work of man. Here's... This uh, soccer tournament is held on the polder, and they, I just think this is cool. They have their fields spanning disconnected parts of land. It's pretty cool. And a couple images here. These, uh, these dikes and artificial edits to the landscape. These lines here. Yeah, all this stuff. Obviously, it could be. It's not outside the scope of man's current possibilities, but I just don't think that's what it is. Okay, let's look at this explanation. This video explains it well. Netherlands has a lot of polder. Dried out centuries ago. And the scale is the giveaway for me or the uh, suspicious aspect. Huge machines of the Wartman pumping station expel a million and a half liters of water a minute. I don't doubt that. And I could be wrong on this, just some of the examples are too crazy, I think. 
Here's another example of that it's similar type of thing. Tyne catchment. Just reading this here. Um, I think it's possible that much of the landscape of Earth was, if the whole civilization reset thing is real, and that actually happened um, possibly multiple times, if that's real, then I think it's possible that the landscape was pre-populated with artificial features to establish precedent for the new civilization so that they would have evidence of ancestors and their work and continuity. So some of the stuff, including this old grid stuff, might just be to establish precedent that people were doing stuff, even though they were, but then the landscape is revamped and then it looks all messy, but they need to reorder it again to show that human activity was happening, if that makes any sense at all. So this article more, this is in California, slightly different look to it, but um, 13,000 miles, and this article is just saying it's not good for wildlife, blah, blah, blah. It's good for agriculture, but uh, not fish and whatever. But uh, let's take a look at California because I think the scale of it is too big for when it allegedly occurred. Let's see, when was this stuff built? So roughly 150 years ago, or over the course of many years, starting 150 or 250 years ago. So let's take a look at Central Valley in California. So basically it's like this whole area and like all of this and it's, I'm just picturing these dudes with like pickaxes and stuff, these gold miner types and I just don't know that they are responsible for all this parceling and subdivision. See this? That's what I'm talking about. Obviously some of this is modern, but I would hazard a guess that it's, in many cases, it's modern repurposing of existing patterns, existing parceling and levees or polder, whatever you want to call it, all this stuff. And if I had come to this, this artificial terraforming suspicion, with this type of thing as my first example, I would not think this is suspicious at all because it just looks like conventional farming and stuff. It's only after seeing some of the other stuff that I started looking at this stuff. So if this was the first thing I saw, yeah, I would say, well, it's just modern man doing his thing. But in light of the all the other crazy stuff, I'm saying it's more likely that much of this is art of fish or, uh, let's see, done by an as yet unacknowledged hand. How about that? Lots of weird grids and squiggles. Channels, just a lot of, a lot of work. Very impressive scale. All right, enough of that. I'll talk more about that in my old grid episode. This is just uh, an article written by a, like a blog by a pilot, and he does a lot of mapping using, I forget which technology, like LiDAR or something like that, one of those things. And he he's seen a lot, he's flown a lot, and I was thinking that pilots would be good people to, to ask about this type of thing because they've 
you know, he's he's gotten a really good look at all this stuff, you know, these beach ridges and, and stuff. I reached out to him and asked if he's ever seen anything artificial, but didn't hear back from him. Probably thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> Maybe I am, but uh, I don't know why I'm including this. I don't know. Maybe it would be cool to see if we can get a, a pilot to go check out the best examples of potential dubiousness or artificiality. Okay, this is interesting. This is Glacial Grooves Geological Preserve in Ohio, formed by glacier action 18,000 years ago, roughly. That's the conventional explanation. Let's look at a couple pictures here. And I wanted to show this because of its resemblance to the vehicle tracks or so-called vehicle tracks on megaliths.org, which have been compiled by Sylvie Ivanova. So in some cases, some cases it's obvious tracks like right here or obvious not glacier action. And then in some places it's a little more natural looking. See like this almost in between, it's like a street with dwellings and this kind of messy tracks that almost looks like this kind of pattern. So, but, and then associated with all these uh, megalithic type projects or whatever, or Roman, Roman stuff. Um, Here you see random tracks. Probably not glacier. Random holes. This road has kind of a messy tracks pattern. And a number of possibilities here. So it's possible that yes, this is natural. And then these vehicle track things were done as like a kind of mimicry of that type of thing or with mimicry of that as one ingredient in the pattern it created. This goofy track stuff kind of looks natural, but kind of not. And then, see, in this case, we don't really see any, as far as I know, any megalithic or otherwise artificial features surrounding it or incorporated into it. So it, it looks to be what, what they say it is. Another possibility is that this was done by the same hand as the more blatant vehicle tracks, but that they wanted to do a more natural job in this area or a more thorough, accurate, or I don't know, a better job in general of this area for whatever reason. And one thing that occurred to me is that this might be like their way of outing themselves. They, who, I don't know, but like if you kind of do a Venn diagram of all these things that kind of look like vehicle tracks, you could say, Okay, well this shares some features of the vehicle tracks, so maybe it was done by the same hand. And then the vehicle tracks here show some of the same features as the vehicle tracks there, you know, elsewhere. And so, like, if you were to do a compare and contrast of all these places that could potentially be artificial or natural, you would have to conclude that even the more natural looking stuff was artificial as well. So it might be their way of like subtly outing themselves. So let me try and explain that one, one more time. So if you see this type of pattern at a site that's obviously artificial, like an ancient site, a megalithic site or something like that, you know, probably one with all the goofy artwork and whatever. If you see this type of feature there, and then you also see that here in this glacier park, then it's like a clue possibly that leads you 
to the conclusion that this type of thing is artificial as well. That's a possibility. Um, I don't know how likely I feel that that is. Uh, in this case, I don't know, natural, artificial, probably natural. And ugh, at the risk of dragging on and on with this segment, it's getting pretty long. I realized that there was a page two to the vehicle tracks on megaliths.org. So I went through and looked at all of the tracks that she has up and uh, I picked out a few that I wanted to just make some general comments on and compare somewhat to the glacial grooves that we we're just looking at in Ohio. Okay, so this is Agarak tracks in Armenia. And we have these two images here. One is obvious, some type of artificial something. And then this thing, which could either be natural or artificial, like the vehicle tracks. And I wanted to run through a number of possibilities here with how this could have went down and what relationship this might have to this. Okay, so number one, both were done by the same hand at roughly the same time for deception or discombobulation or bewilderment purposes or something like that. Another possibility, both were done by the same hand but at different times, so different phases of one person's plan. Uh, number three, a different possibility, it was done by two different parties and they were unrelated or perhaps they were expanding on one another's previous work. So maybe this was here and then some other person came along and did this. Or maybe this was here and some other person came along and did this. Another possibility done by two different parties with the feature in the second image or the bottom image added to confuse the sight of the feature in the first image or the top image. So maybe this is legit. And then this is like goofy stuff added in later to muddy the water or besmirch this civilization to confuse the situation. Or the opposite is also possible. Maybe this is from, I don't know what it would be, but from a legit civilization, their work or uh, the byproduct of their work. And then this was added later as some type of confusion mechanism or dilution of the site to make the site more confusing. Another possibility, it was multiple different parties both creating facade features or decoy features. So it's possible that it's different people did this and this even though they're nearby each other, uh, but they're both decoy features or empty features or arbitrary features, that's possible. Doesn't this look kind of arbitrary? This looks like it could be functional, but it's also possible that it's arbitrary. So maybe there's multiple deceiving parties. I mean, who knows, there's a million possibilities. And then the last one I would mention is that this might be natural, of course. This might even be like glaciers doing that. I doubt it, but just leaving the door open for that. This might be just legit man-made work, and this might be something nature did. Also, many people have already pointed out the similarity between the glacier grooves in Ohio and these ancient tracks. So I just want to clarify that it's not an original thought or comparison of mine. Let's look at a couple more tracks. These are the Agrigento tracks in Italy. Uh, two images here of these, and uh, obviously not glacier, obvious artificial. Uh, I'm going to say obviously not wagon ruts, but that's kind of pretty obvious by now, or pretty well discussed. And then, of course, the lines on the side, which are kind of similar to the glacier lines, but not really. Um, just for reference, just throwing it in real quick. These are tracks at Langenstein, Germany and you see them down the middle of this corridor. So was there a corridor and then these tracks were cut in the already occurring natural corridor? Or was the whole corridor cut by whatever did these tracks? 
It's an obvious question that we don't have an answer to. And low resolution, but you can kind of see how messy it is. And here you've got these cutouts or alcoves or little cave things that look like they're probably, yeah, artificial cutout. It's like a little window thing there. And I think the tracks were done by the same person who did these holes and stuff. But it doesn't look particularly like those glacier grooves. It's definitely more blatant. These are tracks in Malta, and there's a vast area which is affected by these tracks. Very long. And the quality of the rock is quite different than the rock in the Glacier Grooves Park. Here you see some underwater, so that hints at its age. These, kind of messy, kind of clean. Some cleaner ones here. And these ones especially remind me, or at least somewhat reminiscent of the glacier carved grooves, because it's not a super clean path of distinct tracks. It's more of a kind of blend of track-like grooves. So either it's multiple passes with a two-tracked vehicle or something like that. Or another thing I was thinking is that the tracks, the so-called tracks, are not actually tracks, but they are made to look like tracks by some type of technology which can create basically any pattern or any type of feature in rock. So it might create a tracks pattern, <laughs> you know, just two tracks going off into the distance like that as one component in a rich gibberish protocol or um, deception agenda. So this tech can create any type of pattern in stone, probably. And then in some cases, it creates the, the clean two track tracks to make it look like there was a vehicle, but there wasn't a vehicle. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I'm trying to get inside their head and, and what their goal is and what their methods are. So I think they have all these decoy or eddy type sites which draw you into dead end areas of investigation. Okay, that's it for these Malta tracks. Let's check out some other tracks. These are the Paratalada tracks in Spain, and I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, but whatever. Two images here. So one thing to notice is the cobblestone or cobblestone-ish thing in the middle, the interior. And just wondering if it was done before or after these tracks. And then you see it in this image as well. So these tracks, which most of us will argue are not cart ruts, since they're in solid rock. Although they could be, but meh. And then I wanted to point out these tool marks here, on the stone here. So it's like this whole road was carved out. And I'm 50-50 on whether these are legit tool marks, whether by an actual tool or by some type of high technology. Like, maybe high technology left these stroke marks as actual excavation maneuvers. Or the other possibility is it's high tech and these marks were not actual excavation maneuvers, but were rather imprinted on this or installed into this as, once again, a type of distraction or just a false, false tool marks that weren't actually maneuvers, but are there to look like tool marks. So like we've seen on that Chinese temple and Petra and all these ancient sites, you have these, a variety of tool marks. And I would say it remains to be seen whether it was necessary to actually do these patterns, these marks, or whether the marks were left deliberately to make it look like those marks were necessary. Hmm, I could probably explain that clearer. And then we also have to take into consideration the stonework. It's pretty messy here, so it could be relatively modern. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't really have any strong opinions on the on the rock these rock walls, but I would guess in a lot of cases they're done by the same person who did these tracks. So they did this, and maybe they did this also, and this, and maybe even this, the buildings. It's possible. And this town of Peratalada or Peratayada is pretty trippy. The whole town is basically stone. The name means stone engraved or carved stone. And I just wanted to point out a couple additional views of the stone in context of the buildings. Stone here, stone here, down here. Here you see it kind of flowing with the streets. Another look at the tracks with the stone on the side. Here. 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 Here again. Here you see it. The rock is sandstone rock, which does vary in hardness. So it is feasible that some of this could have been carved if it's a softer variety of sandstone rock. Here it's showing the trench that surrounds the whole town. Uh, it's a defensive moat and it gets up to about seven or eight meters deep. So it's pretty deep as you'll see. The whole town was started I think around the 11th century and then slowly developed over time, apparently, allegedly. So here you see a bridge and the moat running underneath. That's the bridge and you see how deep it is. And apparently just carved by hand. A few different views of the moat here. See some tool marks on the side there. And if you look at all the buildings in the town, there's a very strange hodgepodge of construction methods and stonework. I was reading up on this and according to the official narrative, it's just multiple eras of construction and remodeling and stuff like that over centuries. Um, just look at this, uh, well, multiple things in this image. See, um, this arch here, stone arch kind of going into this stone pattern here, which could, I don't know, it's a little goofy, but it's understandable, I guess. And then this brick archway here, got these big stones surrounding this window or whatever that is. And then you see bricked up this window here. So maybe this window is newer as possible. And then you see another similar thing in this image with this brick archway just right in the middle of the stonework interrupting it. I guess we could come up with a feasible explanation how it got this way. And just because I can't come up with an explanation right off the top of my head doesn't mean a good explanation doesn't exist. Obviously that would be arrogant on my part, but I just want to throw in there one more time the possibility that the brickwork was done at the same time as the stonework and just made to look like it was done at a different time and possibly at the same time as the grooves or ruts and the moat around the place as well. Like in this image there's so many there's like long bricks, there's big stones, big clean cut stones, big messier stones, there's brick, there's this stuff, more brick. It's kind of a, a scramble or a jumble. And let's watch a few minutes of this video, just a touristy video of this city, Paratalada, Tayada. Here we see this stone moat from the outside. Pretty monumental task to carve all that, to excavate all that stone. Another look at the stone intermingled with the cobblestone. And these ruts here, what are allegedly wagon ruts, cart ruts, but doubtful in my opinion. 
Good look at it there. There's that spot where the uh, tool marks were. Another look at the stone flanking the streets here. Good look at it there. Kind of see the tool marks here, or possibly just the grains of the rock. And this is pretty cool. There's a, a big well right here. It's carved in stone. Good look at the stonework there. So I think places like this whole city and the huge complex of Petra and many places were just created all at once. Or at least that's one theory that sounds fairly plausible to me at this point. Actually, let me refine that idea a little bit further. I would say it's likely that the shit show of our history is too rich to put a finger on and say we're looking at just this phenomenon here, or just this here, or all megaliths are XYZ. The decoy features thing is probably one thing that did happen, and then there's other stuff like petrification weapons, which could morph an existing structure to make it look like anything, possibly leaving some sections untouched just to make it confusing. Also at play may be natural petrification over long periods of time, and possibly imprints in the stone or negative images like Wise Up talks about. Maybe some structures were obliterated and a few portions of it were allowed to remain and then other sites were created to mimic somewhat the features of those remains. Maybe this town of Peratayada was a legit town of some kind and then it was almost completely restylized while still including some of the original features. Same thing with Petra. And then, of course, possible large biology, like giant trees and stuff, which were petrified and maybe tweaked out into different forms with high tech or whatever. I was thinking it would be interesting if the organisms got smaller with each reset. But I think I already addressed all this in part 6, hodgepodge theory, so I'm probably repeating myself now. Anyways, next set of tracks. These are tracks from the Phrygian Valley in Turkey. Obvious artificial stone work there. And associated with these tracks. So when you see that, the angles, you know it's artificial. And then when you see this nearby, that's like a clue that, oh, this, well, it looks like it almost could be natural. It must be artificial because it looks fairly similar to that. Although someone could have certainly came along and just chiseled that away by hand or whatever. Not necessarily the same person did all of this, but these somewhat resemble the glacier grooves in that they're somewhat messier and multi-tracked. One, two, three, four, five, kind of six, or tough to say how many, but that's what leads me to think it's not some type of vehicle which has a set number of tracks. It's more like some type of device which can make a two-track pattern or a five-track pattern or a start and stop three-track pattern or whatever it wants to do. So this is whatever this is. I don't know. Just wanted to show it. And here's another look at it. Somewhat natural looking in some places. Another look. Like what others have said, it's as if the stone was wet when this happened. But I don't think that necessarily needs to be true for some type of high-tech device to create a pattern like this. But 
I'm pretty sure it was like some type of sonic weapon or uh, sonic device which could, with high precision, liquefy or soften stone and then remove it within probably a matter of seconds or less. And the source website for these images of the Phrygian Valley tracks, it's a Russian website and it has a big set of really great photos of this location. So I lined them up in a slideshow and it will last for about the next nine minutes. I think the photos speak for themselves pretty much, so no commentary from me. Just pay close attention to some of the details.
the Souza tracks in Brazil. You see multiple parallel tracks here. Just one more example. This is Starbuck Island in Kiribati. And I think it was pointed out that this is actually some type of modern something uh, due to modern activity. I'm not quite, I can't remember where I saw what the explanation was, but that's, you know, definitely could be. Here's the little thing down there, whatever that is. Maybe it's one of these vehicles that made the tracks, maybe not. And then some tracks here, which if you follow them, they look like they almost continue to create the streaks around the island, which we should assume are natural, the streaks around the island, the ridges. But then you see this perpendicular one, like you see a streak here, and could be multiple eras with different sea levels, and then it created different overlapping patterns. But and with this guy here, and then these tick marks, I don't know if I buy that it's modern work. It certainly could be, so I don't know. Yeah, whatever. These are the Teruel tracks in Spain, and I probably butchered that pronunciation, but I see some type of track there. Could be water erosion, but then you see these. So these were excavated, they were buried, and then it was found that these tracks were underneath a layer of sediment. And that reminds me of uh, Gobekli Tepe, how that was deliberately buried. So I would argue that probably Gobekli Tepe and stuff like this was part of one project by one party or multiple parties with the same agenda or something like that. And I can't quite decide whether I think this dirt piled up naturally over a long period of time or even a short period of time or whether it was deliberately covered up because it's pretty shallow right below the surface. And you see these clean cuts, very clean grooves. And notice that these are going at an angle here. Like these two seem to be parallel, but then this comes in at an angle like this angle. So it's, I don't think it's some type of simple vehicle that has tracks. Uh, just a couple more images here. See, it's a little more messy here. And then two tracks there veering off, multiple tracks, crisscrossing, and a little messier there. Interestingly enough, the glacial grooves in Ohio on Kelly's Island, they were buried until 1972, just something to be taken into account. And it's not clear whether there's additional glacial grooves still buried, uh, continuing under the soil, or whether all of it has been excavated. I couldn't quite find that out, but still interesting. This is an image of tracks from Tlaxica, Mexico, and you see the kind of haphazard orientation of them. It's kind of flowing in one direction, but also kind of rounded and messy. So just one variation on it. These tracks are in Alessano, Italy. And this image, this one right here, reminds me a little bit of the one from Glacier Park, just how it kind of ends abruptly like that. Not necessarily related or correlated, but just for reference. This is an area of Turkey south of Derinkuyu that's apparently 40 by 25 kilometers of just a vast field of these strange tracks. So here, here we have this kind of step, almost like footsteps. I doubt that's what it is, but here you see another set of them. Here you see the lines along the side. Mm, this kind of like donut thing. More prominent lines, very similar to the look that the glacier park has. These are from Uplistica, Georgia. See a groove here. And also these rock cut dwellings or whatever that is. This goofy kind of melty look to it some kind of a lot of holes and grooves and that stuff another set of possible fake tool marks all around it 
Like, I, I wonder if anyone ever really lived here, or at least not the original people who built it. And then here you see a faint track mark along the side here. So that's what I mean by kind of combining features in such a way as to hint at a link between this track thing and this type of architecture, if you want to call it architecture, or geotecture. So I think this track could be like a clue, which tells us, oh, since all this is like high tech artificial stuff, then maybe this is too. And then maybe the other places with these tracks are too. And then it's like a, kind of like a scavenger hunt, a feature scavenger hunt. And then it leads you back to maybe even the, the glacier grooves being artificial. I still think the glacier grooves look pretty natural, so I don't want to be too opinionated on that. This is the Titus Tunnel in Turkey, and the lines on the walls, and of course these rock cut miscellaneous arcs and rectangles and stuff like that, which I'd say there's a good chance were not functional, other than for the function of looking like they may have served a function. And big caves and stuff. Narrow corridor, which is likely artificial, and the the wall here, kind of sheer flat wall. Another corridor here. These are tracks from the White Cliffs Trail in Arizona. Obvious artificial grooves here, and then these divots along the side. Then also these holes in the side of the rock. So there's these fairly regularly spaced divots on the side. And then not too far from that, the cliff nearby, there's these holes in the rock. So it's as if it's a trail of clues leading from the artificial tracks to the divots to the holes in the cliff. So we have to question how much of this cliff is natural. And it, these could be natural, I'm sure there's natural explanations for this, but when viewed alongside this, you gotta at least ask the question. And another look at it here, these divots, 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 and divots down the center as well. Okay, and I want to compare that to Ayers Rock in Australia, and it's this big rock with these straight lines across it, and it's kind of just a big lump of rock more or less isolated from the surrounding environment. The rest of the environment is flat and then there's this big thing sticking out like a sore thumb. Big old chunk of rock with parallel lines and then these divots. Definitely of a different quality and scale than the, um, the tracks we were just looking at in Arizona, the White Cliffs Trail, but you kind of see these ones at least somewhat reminiscent. I know some people think this is a large piece of petrified biology. That's definitely possible. I just want to touch on the idea that maybe it's part of the same project as the vehicle tracks and maybe even the glacier grooves. I mean, see how natural this looks? It, it, I mean, uh, it's, it's tough to say. You just come right out and say it's artificial. It looks strange. That's, I mean, we can all agree on that. It's odd looking. And then these divots also could be natural, just some type of erosion or something like that. But just food for thought might be related to the tracks in Arizona and all the underground rock cut cities and stuff like that. And nearby that Ayers Rock in Australia, not too far from that, is this King's Canyon in Australia. And you have this sheer face here, which has a number of things I'd like to point out on it. So it kind of looks burnt in some places, pretty um, flat and messy look to it. It's a pretty rich pattern, perfectly flat layers, pretty interesting. And then you might take note of these almost regularly spaced tick mark things or vertical grooves. Could be natural rippling of the material due to some, I don't know, natural process. But um, these are interesting, the vertical things, or it could just be water dripping down and um, whatever. 
Also, I want to draw your attention to this swoosh type pattern that goes across. So there's the, the flat horizontal layers and then kind of interrupting that is these uh, swooshy patterns, um, which I got to say reminds me of the beach ridges or coastal streaks, which are much larger scale, obviously, but and different quality, but just reminiscent of it. And I'm wondering if this swoosh thing is like some type of calling card or signature move as a way of deliberately outing themselves. Matt from the Quantum of Conscience YouTube channel, he talks about deliberate errors and blatant flubs and purposeful mistakes in plain sight as a way of kind of outing themselves with their fraud, their global earth scale fraud. And he's talking about it in a different context of like fake public shootings and stuff and stuff like that. But uh, I'm wondering if that principle extends to some of these geological and archeological features. I wonder if this is like, uh, you know, like the wet bandits from Home Alone. They leave the water running after they do a robbery. So is this feature left here, the swoosh thing, as a kind of alarm bell or something to get your attention and say, hey, look, this doesn't belong here. And I got to backtrack a little bit, at least, and say, well, it could definitely be natural, some type of abrasion or erosion or something that created this swoosh, something to consider. And then I'll give you a few different looks at it. See it there. There's a good view of the inside of the canyon. Mm. This area has a distinctly different look to this area. Wonder what caused that. Anyways, uh, another look at that swoosh thing. And like this flat perpendicular uh, remaining bits of rock across the layers, it strikes me as odd as if some type of artificial plaster were applied over the natural rock, possibly. See, it looks like it keeps going up like that in a circle. Like a, a brush stroke. One last look at it here. Swooshy. And then I'll just revisit real quick the photos I showed at the end of video 11, just a collection of vehicle tracks and fields of them, pretty messy, quasi reminiscent of the glacial grooves, multiple sets of tracks at multiple different elevations, the lines along the side similar to the glacial grooves. Here we have multiple things going on, like uh, tracks here of some kind. And then like another little divot here or um, difference in height, this elevated bit here. And this does look like it could be natural. So it's one of those things that's like halfway between a vehicle track and the glacier grooves. This is just the tunnel it's cut straight through the rock. These vertical parallel grooves in this rock hillside. Fields of them. This narrow corridor with tracks in the middle and tool marks on the side. Another one with like ribbing across. So if something can create any pattern like this through rock, then it could certainly create the glacial grooves in Ohio. Whether or not it did is another question, but that's enough of this topic. Chocolate Hills in Bohol. I had mentioned this as it looking like just a bunch of dumped piles of dirt or material, like something dumped it from above. And the chocolate hills are an example of what's called conical karst. Here you see some examples of it. You're in China, pretty cool stuff. 
and it's kind of like a natural ripply pattern. So I, I don't, hmm. I could see it going either way. Like the conventional explanation of karst is like kind of like a multi-layered uh, erosion phenomenon where you have like a cave system and sinkholes and rivers carrying material away and it's pretty dynamic. So it wouldn't surprise me if the chocolate hills are just natural. Sometimes nature just makes counterintuitive patterns if what we observe as nature is nature. If not, then we're in for some surprises. But uh, obviously, even if our version of nature is a phony one or a, like a, a cheese dicky one, the actual nature with a capital N has to permeate it somewhat. So, I mean, this stuff, this type of thing does happen, apparently. Okay. It's just a cool image in, I forget, Scotland or something. Wherever Burn Way is. Pretty cool. See, this is like the type of thing that almost looks like fake rock. Or there's like a phony-ish aspect or look to it. But... It could just be my intuition's wrong. Obviously, there's different conditions causing different patterns. Possible. I mean, it almost kind of tracks. It's almost straight lines there and some, there's some short lengths like that. Could just be natural fissures or whatever. Some interesting flows of the, the rock. Not necessarily artificial, just worth considering. And this karst thing could be responsible for a lot of strange patterns like sinkholes, which would just look like a, a circle from above. And it causes a lot of different patterns. There's a lot of different types of it. I only mention it because it's something to be aware of, and I wasn't particularly aware of it until recently, so it's important not to jump to conclusions in either direction, so I haven't learned as much theory as I should have, but it's important to learn the, the conventional theory. And this video is called Hampi by Sky Hampi in, I think, India. This is one of those places that wouldn't surprise me if the landscape is artificially edited heavily, like all these rocks. Almost looks like the big rock piles were just dumped there, like seriously. And all these goofy temples, ancient sites, all the rock piles possibly just placed there. Here, obviously, it's not just loose rocks, it's rocks in hills. It's curious, I'll say that. So I just wonder, beautiful boulders everywhere. I wonder how much of this is natural. Maybe 100%, maybe 0%. <laughs> it's frustrating and annoying, I know. I have I've no clue something. I have no clue something. And the Hampi landscape is actually quite similar to Joshua Tree. National Park in California. So here's a look at that. You see a lot of the same type of rock configurations. And it's also similar to the Devil's Marbles in Northern Australia. It's a similarly rocky type area. And for some reason, I feel compelled to revisit this Ravana's Palace location in Sri Lanka real quick for comparison. It's not necessarily all that similar to Hampi, but I just wanted to take another look at it. Notice the strange features in the stone, strange grooves. Big rocks lying all about. Lots of smaller boulders surrounding the larger main one. Inexplicable rectangles and paths. 
through the stone, pretty nonsensical, very haphazard patterns in the rocks. Almost looks like it could have been functional, but ultimately it just looks like a Picasso painting. My best explanation for the strange features in the rocks is that they are meant to confuse and bewilder. They are empty, non-functional, nonsensical features designed to scramble the human psyche. So that's my best guess. What is your best guess? Okay, we're going to look at some YouTube videos. Some of these are like educational, uh, just the tabs from here to here. Some of them are cool examples of possible artificiality. So uh, this is just the conventional theory on how glaciers form and what we observe does fit the, the theory. So the V-shaped valleys, U-shaped valleys, Obviously, that could be mimicked by any sufficiently advanced mofo, but uh, the conventional theory does make sense, so I just want to be clear that I'm not throwing that out the window. Yosemite. I almost regret mentioning Yosemite because I don't really see a whole lot of artificial looking stuff in Yosemite. It could be just traditional glacier action, so I don't know. Good stuff. Just another video. You can Google all these key terms if you want because it's pretty well studied and a lot of specific circumstances creating unique patterns. And I think this video is mostly talking about when a glacier picks up a huge chunk of material and then deposits it later, like this. 50-50 um, on that type of thing, but likely natural. So just a couple tabs on glaciers here. I kind of forgot what I wanted to say about them. Yeah, just explaining the different patterns that form from glaciers points and peaks and grooves, something to be aware of, troughs, especially a place like this, like I would be tempted to say that we're looking at something artificial, but I would say it's more likely that a glacier just came and carved a path, like they say, or I don't know about more likely, but pretty likely, how about that, does that work? Some clean lines here, but again, sometimes natural flows create striking patterns. Stuff doing stuff. Glacial valleys. May or may not be natural. Freezing and thawing. Scree. This video is so unorganized, I'm sorry. Not this video, the video you're, the whole video that you're watching. Okay, some coastal formation stuff. This is an animation of a spit forming. Let's check this out. So there's the current going along the coast and there's kind of a an uneven pattern of coast and then basically a spit starts to form or what's called a spit and it creates this lagoon thing here and it's pretty well understood uh, not by me up until recently so a lot of the quote, thin strips of land, unquote, that I was talking about, or at least that you may have seen in my place marks if you check those out. It's not as suspicious as I was thinking before. I mean, because you can watch, we'll see in a minute, you can see the stuff form in real time. So, of course, could be mimicked, but uh, I wouldn't say I'm, in, well, I'm a little embarrassed, <laughs> but not that embarrassed. 
that I got this one possibly wrong. Barrier Islands, Spitz, pretty well understood. This is a great video if you want a good explanation of how spits are formed. And spit is just that thin strip of sand, land. And this video will explain it pretty well. Two headlands, the sea, prevailing current, or wind, sorry. Uh, sea waves going this way, and some waves kind of going this way. I'm explaining this horribly, but that's just fluid dynamics basically with various materials and you got wind, you have diffraction, refraction, blah blah, rivers contributing. So I may have cried artificial when it was natural. So John Levi mentioned in one of his videos that I think this is in California. He was asking who built these uh, sandbars, but I, I'm saying, uh, yes, it's very possible that they're artificial and they kind of look like that in many cases, but I don't want to have that discussion without first acknowledging the, the conventional theory, which I kind of didn't do really. They do look weird. They look weird. <laughs> That's one of the features of barrier islands and spits is they look weird. And here's one of those cuspate forelands. He's mentioning, like, he's kind of saying, WTF, this looks weird. And I still think it looks weird. Um, and, this, of course, the streaks or beach ridges on the end of it. And uh, I'm just not quite as confident as I was that there's anything artificial about it. So that's all I really want to say. And a helpful analogy, I think, for understanding spits and barrier islands and also tombolos is that of a soap bubble suspended between two rings. We've all seen this type of thing. So with the coastlines, we can imagine two main anchor points or approximate anchor points or nodal points and then material stretching between them to bridge the potential. Of course, that's an oversimplification, but I think this type of thing definitely plays a role in coastal formation. I think this guy emailed me back. He helped me uh, figure out, because I couldn't find the, the actual name for the beach ridges. I was calling them streaks. And somebody, I emailed a couple people. I think he's one of the ones that helped me out are pointing me in the right direction. These are some kind of time-lapse photos of uh, spit forming. A flying spit with a kind of a pointy aspect. And it's, they run some simulations here and we see some examples in nature. So basically, this is tooling, the tooling of Earth right now. <laughs> Math. He's just talking about all the different influences that go into the creation of a coastal feature, specifically spits. Kind of see it forming around a barrier there. These are the little barriers. This is a simulation. And you can see all these goofy patterns forming. All the different parameters you would have to consider to get it right. Oh, this guy talks about a lot of stuff. If you're really hardcore, this is a good video to watch. Just about all the considerations that go into shoreline morphology, all the heavy math stuff. I won't bore you with it. Bedding planes are another thing that need to be considered. Uh, layers of rock and what angle they're at will affect the appearance of cliffs at the coastline and what happens to them. It can be diagonal in various directions. They can be vertical or horizontal. 
which I find interesting in the first place, but they will form different features on the coast. Something to be aware of.